Seeing Kundeva shed tears, Vanathi also started to wonder. Aniratha Brahmariya's iron heart, who had seen so many joys and sorrows in the world, also softened. Mother! This sinner is the cause of all the troubles the emperor is going through now. I don't know what atonement I am going to make to get rid of that sin. Said. Sir. There is nothing they don't know. But I will tell you what I know. If you tell the father that the daughter of the squire is not dead, but alive, his suffering will end and he will have peace of mind. I have come to tell you that. I have come to ask you to somehow arrange to bring my great-grandmother. But you are useless. You've done it. Said I lay Aprati. Yes, mother. I had also come to such a conclusion. I have decided to tell the emperor about the existence of Mandakini Devi. But if I simply tell him, he will not believe. How can I make him believe that what I said before was a lie and what I am saying now is the truth? That is what I intended to say after bringing the goddess here. Anuradhar said, I went to the island of Sri Lanka mainly for that purpose. But the Palyavatarayars have told the emperor that I went to Elam to conspire with their younger brother and elder brother. I am going to bring Mandakini Devi in front of their father to prove that it is not the case, said Anuradhar. Sir! If you take it suddenly and stop it, your father may be harmed. You should let them know in advance and let them see you. Said Ilay Aprati. Yes, yes, I intend to do so. I thought I would go and tell you when Mandakini Devi came to this house. I had intended to come to the palace this morning. But then the daughter of Tyagavidankar intervened and disappointed me. I will punish that wicked woman one day. Said the Prime Minister. Oh! Don't do anything like that. Whether she's a good girl or a bad girl, I don't know. But wasn't she the one who saved Arul Mazai from drowning in the sea? Say God saved, mother. Lord Palakanda saved in the sea of milk. If not for his grace, what can this little girl do? If astrology is true, if the transitory effects of planets and stars are true, then sea, fire, storm and earthquake can't do anything to the prince. Nothing happens without God's grace. But God's power must also work itself through men. I mean to send Pungajali back to Nagapatanam, sir. Or, if you think otherwise assuming that you can make Arul Mazai come here publicly. No, mother. No. It is better that the people do not know about Arul Hivarman until it is certain who the throne belongs to. I intend to ask their father for a decision today. If Madhurand Hagar is to be crowned, it is better to send their younger brother back to Elam. The Chola people will never agree to crown Madhurand Hagar while Arul Hivarman is here. The Chola country is a great battlefield, all the rivers of the Chola country will flow with blood. Sir! Then isn't it better to send Punguzali and Santhane Mudan to Nagapatanam again? That's good, if the emperor wants, Arulmas Hivarmar can come secretly to Tanjore once and then go back. Yes, yes. The emperor's heart will be at peace once he sees with his own eyes that goddess Mandakini and Arulmasai are alive. Doesn't their father have any concerns about the great prince? Not at all. The emperor believes that there is no one in the world who can pose a danger to Adidakari Gallan. What do you think, sir? I do not have much faith. The great prince in the battlefield is a Sagaya Surer. But elsewhere it is not difficult to deceive and deceive him. The Palyavetarayas are hostile to him. Ila Irani of Palvur is making some terrible secret plot against him. I sent these two messages to Kari Kalar through my disciple but to no avail. He who refused to come to Tanjavur, no matter how much he was told, has gone to the house of the Sambuvarayar of Kadampur. Sir! I have sent a message to my Tamayan that Pavur Ila Irani may be our sister. I have also sent a warrior of the monkey clan to protect her from nearby. Aha! If only Valavarayar were here now, he could have sent her to Nagapatanam. I will also send my disciples so that the child does not get into any trouble. Even now, if you send Pungujali, I intend to send Tirumala as well. Haven't the departed arrived yet? 
if my great-grandmother arrives, three quarters of the burden will be lifted from my chest. As soon as she arrives, you will meet my father and tell her, won't you? I must tell my mother the whole story from the beginning. Aha! What a heartbreak for Malayaman's daughter. Besides, what is he going to do when the old man of Tyrako Valarg comes to know about this? If he finds out that his grandchildren don't have degrees, perhaps Malayaman will start saying that he will destroy this country. Leave the task of fixing my father to me. There is this girl Venati, I am worried about her great father. He wishes that the Kajum Valar girl is going to live in the Chola Singh Adana. Even this girl has that desire in her heart. Vanatha now interrupted and said in an angry voice sister. At that moment, before Vanatha could speak up, Pungazali entered. Seeing that she came alone, the three of them chuckled a bit. Kurya daughter. Where is your aunt? Where is Tirumala? The Prime Minister asked excitedly. Sir. My pride is shattered. I could not bring aunt here as I said. Shall we see you before you go? Or have you refused to come? If so. No sir. We brought her inside the fort. Only then did she get caught in the crowd and went missing. Said Punghuali. She then gave the following details about the incident. Fortunately, Mandakini Devi was at the house of Sendan Amuthan. She had her reasons for being there. Amuthan's house was destroyed in the storm last night. A tree from the garden had fallen on the roof of the house. Sendan Amutano was lying down and panting because he got wet in the rain on the first night. The two sisters were trying to clear the fallen trees and repair the house. Mandakini was happy when she saw the flower pot. She was a little hesitant after seeing Tirumala. After Punghuali said that he belongs to us, she got courage. On the way Pungazali and Thirumalai what to say to the dumb queen. They had talked and decided that she would come with them without hesitation. Pungazali told her aunt like that. She let it be known in sign language that the emperor was ill and might leave this earth at any moment, and that he longed to see the mute queen once before his last breath that he had not forgotten the mute queen for so long, and that if he saw her he might gain new strength and live for some time longer. She said that it was for this reason that Chief Minister Aniru Thapram Marayar had somehow sent men to catch her and that she stayed in the Chief Minister's palace for the first night. Kundave Devi, the beautiful daughter of the Emperor, was also informed that she was waiting at the Prime Minister's house to take the mute queen to her father. After somehow knowing all this, Mandakini left with the flute and Tirumala. When they reached the fort gate, the emperor's retinue was entering the fort. The three stood aside to let them go. Mandakini was looking at the Vilakara army with unblinking interest. A large crowd followed the Velaka army into the fort. Attempts by the guards to stop them and barricade the fort gates were unsuccessful. Let's not go with this crowd. There is a special tunnel to go to the chief minister's palace. Let's go through it, said Thiru Malai. Pung Jalai was tempted to tell her aunt about this. The dumb queen ignored it and started to join the crowd going into the castle. Thiru Malai and Punga Zalai followed. Even after entering the fort, Punga Zalai's aunt did not mind that she could go to Thiru Malai by a different route. She went along with the crowd. The other two were surprised to see her, who was afraid of crowds, doing this. After a short distance, some people in the crowd began to pay special attention to Mandakini. If you look at this Emma, isn't Pavuver like Ilay Aranee's dress? They started talking to each other. This worried Tirumala and Pungazali. They stopped in front of Mandakini and tried to stop him. Meanwhile, some of the people who saw all were Kadian said, Who is this Vaishnava? He is disturbing a girl child. They said. These words fell on their ears and those who had gone ahead in the Velaka army came back. They surrounded the mute queen and drove the others away. One of the guards said to Devi Mandakini, Mother. Who are you? Tell me who disturbed you. We will hang him right here. He asked. The dumb queen stood without answering. Meanwhile, someone asked, If you look at her, isn't the queen of Palyavar Hajati? He said. 
Another said, that's how it should be. That's why she's so arrogant. He said. Pavur crowd is a proud crowd. Said another. These events took place recently at the palace of Chinapalyavatarayar. So some soldiers from Pavur came there to find out what the fuss was about. They heard the words of one of the Vilakara warriors, the assembly of Pavur is a proud assembly. Who is blaspheming about the Pavur crowd? Let him come forward, said one of the Pavur warriors. I told you so. What are you going to do? Vilakara Viran came forward. You arrogant people, the time for your arrogance is at hand. Said the hero of Pavur. Aha! Are you talking like this because you drowned our prince in the sea? It is because of bad guys like you that the storm blew and the whole town was ruined. Said one of the crowd. Pavur hero what did you say? He went to attack him. Vilakara Viran stopped him. Then there was a scuffle, confusion and shouting in the crowd. Long live the scumbags! Some chanted, Long live the Sundara Chola Emperor of the Three Worlds! Long live Kajum Balar Velar! Long live Thiruko Valar Malay Aman! Voices also arose. At that time, Chinapalyavatara arrived there on horseback. The fight stopped when he saw him. The people dispersed and scattered in all directions. The Velayka soldiers went ahead. The Palyavar soldiers surrounded Kalanthay Khandar and reported what had happened. Bungazali and Alwarkadayan went aside on the side of the road. They looked all around and found Mandakini missing. Oh! What is this? This has happened. The government is going on beautifully in the capital. How can we find the ant? Has something bad happened? Has anyone caught her? Pungazali was worried. After the Kalanthay Khandar and Pavur soldiers had gone, they searched on all four sides, Mandakini is missing. Thirumalai said, I will search for some more time. You go quickly and tell the chief minister and I lay Aprathai, it is not enough for us two people to search. The chief minister and I lay Aprathai will arrange something. Pungujali hesitated to leave. Alwarkadian again said, Listen to me, nothing could have happened to your aunt. Your aunt has seen a certain man in the crowd. I guess from the fact that she looked carefully in one direction. That is why she came along with the crowd. It seems that she is still following him. Anyway, you can find her, you go and tell the Prime Minister. He said. Pungazali arrived at the Prime Minister's palace. Hearing all this, Kundeva became very worried. Anuradha didn't seem too worried. You see, Princess. Do you know that the devil of rebellion is waiting for an opportunity? Aromas Hivarmar is alive and well. The whole kingdom will be on fire. Said. Nothing of the kind will happen as long as you are Prime Minister. Now, tell me about my great-grandmother. It seems to be just as I feared. How shall I find her? She asked. They don't need to worry about that, now that I'm inside the fort. I can't go outside without being noticed. I'll make arrangements for that. I'll also make arrangements for a search. From now on, Goddess Mandakini will not leave this place without seeing the Emperor. Said.